sure. I wanted to ask you, I guess, uh, if, I'm sure that you've seen uh, um, Code Blue and AIDS, AIDS Free World's critique. They say that the, that the, the reforms are, are much less than what they seem, and they point out at least four major problems, one of them being that if civilian staff are charged, that essentially all the UN can, can, can uh, threaten is administrative, is termination of jobs rather than crime. They say that the whole that, that the UN has a conflict of interest in investigating its own personnel and should create an outside uh, body. Given, that, given their role in, in some of the exposures, along with Mr. Compass, of these sexual abuse problems, what's the UN's response to their detailed critique? Well, first of all, I would like to point out that it was, in fact, UN investigators, including a UN investigator, a human rights investigator on the ground in the Central African Republic, that brought the, the accusations to light, the ones that you're referring to. We ourselves have been doing a job policing ourselves it, from human rights investigators, from people working for UNICEF, from uh, officials in the Office of Internal Oversight Services. So a lot of the information that groups like AIDS Free World transmit are information coming from us. We have been doing this, uh, and we believe that we have an effective way of investigating our personnel. And the record over the last few years shows that there have been a, a wide number of investigations. Regarding their criticisms more in general, uh, of course, we l like to take in uh, as much constructive criticism as we can from the outside, and we'll try to respond uh, to different groups that, that uh, find objections. And yet, at the same time, one thing I, I do want to emphasize is that we do not believe that UN peacekeepers or UN staff in general are, should be treated as if they're inherently a criminal class. This is a problem that has affected a small number of peacekeepers, a small number of civilian staff, and we need to make sure that it's rooted out and that there's zero tolerance for such offenses. But at the same time, we very much appreciate the work of the countries that have contributed troops. You have to remember there's, uh, for years, upon, year after year, there are more than 100,000 uh, troops deployed around the world. They place themselves at great personal risk uh, many of them have been killed in combat. Many of them have been, been wounded. Uh, they face tremendous hardship, and, uh, and we are, are very proud of what they achieve. And we want to work in partnership with the member states to make sure that any wrongdoing is rooted out. But that's in the, in the context of appreciating the overall work that, that has been done. We, we do not regard them as inherently a problem, as, as inherently... Uh, people who cannot be trusted. The, the, it's far from the case. Uh, society after society has found a greater amount of peace, and many people have owed their lives to the work that they're doing. Right. I don't think that's what Code Blue was saying, but I want to ask you, and maybe you can get an answer on this, two specifics. There was an Amnesty International report about, about uh, sexual abuse in the Central African Republic in which they said a Cameroonian peacekeeper was killed, and the next day the contingent returned to the area, and many people thereafter uh, testified about sexual abuse, including of minors. So in the report, it says that there is, one, a sole allegation of sexual abuse against the Cameroonian contingent in CAR. Um, this is some time ago, as you remember. When the, and, and there's also a, another one in, in Minusta. Is it possible, in the spirit of the transparency you're discussing, to say, what's the status of this? Why has it taken so long? Why was there only one charge written in this report when, according to the Amnesty International one, they're the contingent that went back and, and at the time frame. And of course, they're not all criminals, but I'm asking you, can you get an update later today about this case reported on by Amnesty International? Ultimately, for us to get an update, we need uh, to have progress in the investigation. Once we have the results to deliver, we can, we can provide that. But until that point, we're allowing that process to continue. Right, but it was said yesterday that things were going to move faster. And the time frame given, given when these incidents took place, how is it still, what is this, I guess, even a statement of what's the status within the Cameroonian justice system? At, at, at this stage, there's, there's no update to provide. Once we have an update, we'll certainly provide it. But uh, every process has its, has its own momentum, has its own rate. I wanted to ask you, uh, I was asking yesterday about the announcement about uh, Luis Arbour and, and, and for some more specifics. And so now you'd said, I guess, that, I, I don't know, I, there were no more specifics. So now I want to ask you, has the ACABQ provided oral approval of not only Ms. Arbour's post, but also a D1 chief of office? And, and if that is the case, how many more posts will be in this office? And why, isn't, why don't you just disclose it if it's an extra budgetary item? Why, why, why is it secret? Well, first of all, Ms. Arbour has yet to start her work. Uh, it, 
it will be up to her to determine precisely what the office is. Yes, uh, some of the initial posts uh, are have been approved, uh, bless you, this week by uh, the administri- uh, Advisory Committee on Administrative and Budgetary Questions. Uh, and so uh, she'll be able to start with that. We'll get more clear numbers once she's actually started her work. Right, but I guess what I'm saying is uh, uh, maybe, there's a, maybe there's a rationale for keeping it secret wh- until ACABQ tells you, yes, you can spend the money. But once they've told you, shouldn't that it, it, be a public it, process? It, it, it's not a secret. This is, like I said uh, yesterday, I think, uh, this was a report that went to member states, and they have it. Yes. Thank you. We're on two questions. One is... is yes. Sure. I wanted to know uh, two things. One is just, is there any UN statement on the sort of finalization of the impeachment of President Park in South Korea that happened, uh, I guess, this morning? Uh, no, there's, there's no statement. Uh, of course, we take, uh, we take note of the, um, of the decision that was reached by the courts. Okay. And I wanted to ask you, this is, again, a kind of a follow-up on peacekeeping accountability. In, in the Central African Republic, there were allegations by an elected member of parliament there of the Uam Prefecture, Roland Bangay Batangwe. This goes back to June 2016. He publicly said that the Cameroonian contingent in, in the area that he represents were engaged in business, including gold, gold, conflict diamonds, opening of businesses. This was widely, you know, you can find a number of articles about it from that time. Uh, and what I'm wondering is what was ever done? Uh, there was a statement that there's an investigation being opened that was by, I guess, Mr. Montero at the time. But there's been nothing publicly said since. What, were, were all of these allegations made by an elected official and on national radio in Central African Republic false, or was there actually something done by MINUSCA and UN Peacekeeping about these allegations? Uh, I'll check with, uh, with uh, MINUSCA to see what happened with that. 